Hello everybody, how are you doing today? Today I'm going to review one of the most popular fitness hybrids on the market, the Specialized Series 2.0. So what is the Series 2.0? It's a pretty sporty fitness hybrid, which means it's designed for longer rides, training, and riding around town for leisure. Uh, and it is also a very good commuter. Specialized has had the Sirius line for years and it's always been popular. They have a more aggressive riding position than other bikes like the Traffic FX2 and the uh, Giant Escape. Um, this is the mid-range version of their commuter or uh, leisure oriented fitness hybrids. Uh, the next model up, the Sirius 3.0, is designed more for fitness. Uh, so there are a few features on this bike that are quite uh, different than other manufacturer offering at this price point. Uh, mainly the uh, more aggressive uh, riding position and uh, two chain rings in the front in comparison to the more standard triple crankset. Also the parts on this bike are uh, significantly uh, better than the parts on the base model, the Sirius uh, 1.0. Uh, today I will go over all the features of this bike and share my opinion. Uh, I will also review every single part of this bike, its overall quality, and whether it's uh, worth upgrading or changing. Uh, I'll leave some links in the description to the replacement or upgraded parts I believe will make this bike even better. Uh, lastly, I will give you my opinion whether it's uh, worth paying the difference uh, between the Sirius and uh, this one. So, let's get uh, started. The... Sirius uh, 2.0 comes with a well-made frame. This is the uh, A1 uh, aluminum. And overall, the welding quality is very good. Paintwork is nicely done, really high quality, especially compared to other companies like uh, Giant uh, or Fuji. Uh, it is also uh, reflective. The paint is reflective, which is nice. Uh, next part is the fork. This is a pretty basic steel fork uh, and has a has straight blades. Uh, steel forks can absorb some of the bumps, but much less when the blades are straight. Uh, combined with the more aggressive geometry, the ride is a bit harsh. But this is, after all, a fitness hybrid. Uh, let's talk about the brakes. Probably the best feature of this bike. Uh, Promax hydraulic brakes that are surprisingly strong. You may have not heard about Promax, but they are one of the biggest brake companies uh, in the world and produce brakes from many, many other brands. Uh, these are probably more than you'll ever need. Uh, it is much stronger than you would expect for this type of bike. Uh, they're also good um, that uh, while it, they're so good that while it's mainly designed for riding in the city, uh, with the right tires you will feel very confident on flat dirt roads and gravel. Uh, so being hydraulic, it does not need a lot of maintenance. Uh, maybe every two, three thousand miles it might need to be bled. Uh, overall, you will be pretty happy with uh, these brakes. Uh, the next part would be the hubs. So this is the these are uh, simple uh, loose bearing hubs. Pretty typical at this price point. Uh, even higher uh, end bikes still have uh, loose bearings. Uh, over time, they need to be serviced uh, as they get loose. Overall, uh, pretty good. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about are the wheels. So, these are double wall rims, uh, pretty standard. Um, they are a bit uh, deeper uh, profile than standard, um, and this actually uh, allows for narrower tires, um, even 728, uh, up to a wider tire at 700 by 42. Uh, that's pretty nice. Um, the, the rims are plenty strong for city use or road use, uh, not really designed to go off-roading, uh, flatter dirt trails are okay, but uh, should uh, you should really get wider tires if you're mainly going on unpaved or uh, damaged roads. Um, regarding the tire, uh, this is a 32 millimeter tire uh, compared to other bikes at this level that come usually with 35 millimeter tires. Uh, I guess to remind you that this is a sportier bike. Um, the tire has uh, a reflective uh, like band around it. And it has a basic level of uh, flat resistance, which is a great upgrade from the Sirius 1. Uh, there are, however, much, much better tires on the market as far as uh, lower uh, rolling resistance and even better flat resistance. Uh, if your plans are to ride often for fitness or commuting, I'll leave a link in the description for two types of tires. 
Um, one is more for fitness and one uh, more for commuting. Uh, if you're planning to ride on dirt, however, I will include uh, a wider tire with more tread to handle uh, dirt and gravel. Uh, now let's talk about the cockpit. Okay, so uh, this is a terrific cockpit, uh, as you could expect. It has the 318 uh, stem and handlebar combination uh, in comparison to the 25.4 older style. Uh, this combination creates a very stiff handlebar. Uh, it's uh, great because you're, you're much more efficient when you're not wasting energy by flexing the handlebar. Uh, older 25.4 handlebar actually suffered from this for a long time. Um, about the grips. Uh, the grips are really nothing special, they are very basic. Um, if you're looking for a much more comfortable grip, um, I'll leave a link in the description to uh, my favorite ergonomic grip. Um, I've been using these for years. Um, they're also, <laughs> they're actually, actually more affordable than the Specialized. Um, let's talk about the shifters. Uh, so these are 2x8 Shimano shifters. Uh, well made, uh, reliable. Um, they'll give you uh, accurate and uh, consistent shifting. Uh, let's talk about the drivetrain. So, um, the drivetrain is actually very interesting. Uh, while everybody else at this level, uh, most everybody else uses uh, triple crank sets, uh, the Cirrus uses a double crank set with pretty reasonable uh, gearing at uh, 4630. Uh, this is a complete shift from what's been done in the last, uh, I would say, almost three decades. And it looks like Specialized is in a hurry to convert all of their bikes to double or single cranks, uh, as you can see in the Cirrus X series. Um, well, decent day Sierra rear derailleur um, should be pretty reliable for about two, three thousand miles. This specific model uh, is sensible to rear derailleur wear and hanger alignment issues. Uh, so you want to check these if the shifting is not uh, perfect. Um, let's see, for front derailleur, has turny front derailleur. Uh, shifts okay, it's a bit clunky, but um, it has a pretty easy job, only switching uh, between two gears. Uh, of the basic, again, double turny crank. Um, a bit disappointing at this price point, but hell, they they, they work pretty well together. Uh, would have been nice to see a full Acero or Altus group set uh, at this price point. Um, let's talk about the chain. Uh, the chain is very good, the KMC X8, uh, well made. Uh, one of the more refined 8-speed chains on the market. It's quiet, it's durable. Um, it's always a good idea to put a chain of uh, better quality uh, than the rest of the components. Um, sometimes it can compensate for uh, less uh, refined parts. Okay, um, let's see if we can get another uh, angle on the uh, drivetrain. So, the, let's talk about the cassette. The cassette is Shimano. Uh, it's a 11.32, which is a pretty standard. The drivetrain has a, has a pretty good uh, uh, balanced amount of uh, high and low gears. You, know, you can easily climb anything. You can also go pretty fast with this bike. Uh, the combination of the 46.30 cranks gives a very similar range of gears to the typical hybrid triple crank set, which is... Uh, 48, 38, 28. Uh, it's easy to find the right gear because they are much closer to each other and require less shifts to reach the gear you need. Uh, overall, Specialized trimmed the very high gears and very low gears and left the rider with a simpler drivetrain that is easier to use, uh, especially for beginners. Uh, and it doesn't really compromise much. Uh, on a triple drivetrain, there are a lot of gears that are duplicates of other gears, and you're also constantly spinning two more chain rings that you're not using. Um, Another note about the cassette, uh, it's a Shimano, but it's the most basic cassette they offer. Uh, this is a painted cassette. Uh, it's not chromed uh, or plated in any way, so they're susceptible to rust. Uh, if you live near the ocean or commute in any weather or leave your bike outside for a long period, you may want to spray them with the oil, spray the cassette with oil. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for a really good corrosion protection spray. Uh, it's also a lubricant. It's also used by Boeing, which is pretty cool. Um, you can also use it uh, on your chain and uh, other components. Uh, let's talk about the crank set. Oh, 
Okay, so uh, this is a very basic unit. Uh, steel rings, uh, square taper, bottom bracket. These are pretty soft, and it's important to replace the chain cassette uh, every 1500 miles in order to not wear the chain rings out. Um, next, I want to talk about the pedals. So these pedals are one of the weakest points on this bike. Uh, very, very simple plastic pedals with loose bearings, basically just waiting for the first date with the pavement to crack and break. Uh, honestly, I don't understand why a bike that costs over $600 comes with such low quality pedals, but unfortunately, that is the case with all other manufacturers. I would immediately replace these with pedals that have steel bearings and better retention systems or, or even stronger aluminum pedals. Uh, again, uh, I'll leave a link in the description to much better pedals. Uh, let's talk about the saddle. So this is a really nice saddle. Uh, it's definitely more on the sporty side, but it works well with this bike. Uh, if you're more experienced and uh, used uh, to tougher, uh, slimmer saddles like on road bikes, you will like this a lot. Uh, on the other hand, if you're doing longer rides or just looking for a comfortable saddle, uh, I would recommend replacing this with something softer. Uh, maybe something thicker and uh, with more padding. Um, if you're planning to for longer rides or if you're more into leisure rides or haven't been on a bike in a while, uh, I would look into a softer saddle. Uh, probably something wider and again, um, I'll leave a link to the description to, in the description to a, a much more comfortable saddle. Um, so one of the features of this bike is the plug-and-play fenders they uh, say you can use and buy from Specialized. Um, and they, supposedly they fit this bike. I have tried these before. They're awful. Uh, the struts just don't work. And it's overall a very, very simple uh, fender. Very basic and fragile. Um, I, uh, I, I use a different type of fender. Uh, uh, much more... Uh, much better designed and easy to install. Uh, again, I'll have a link in the description. Um, I'll also leave a link for a really good uh, cargo rack if you're in, if you're into that. Um, if you're into carrying stuff like groceries or maybe a backpack or hey, even a small dog, um, you can install saddlebags and a basket on on a rack. Um, because uh, Specialized uses a flat mount disc brake system, there's no need for a disc specific rack, which is pretty cool. Okay, so what do I think about this bike? Um, this is a really good choice if you want a faster commuter or want to use this for fitness. The riding geometry is more aggressive than similar hybrids, meaning you'll be leaning forward and be less upright. Uh, the overall build quality is very good and the brakes are excellent. Uh, Specialized is obviously one of the biggest bike brands in the world and they have a large uh, dealership network Usually they have good dealers that service these bikes and sell them. Um, and if you're deciding between the Sears 1.0 or other entry-level hybrids, this is a significantly better bike with much better components. Uh, overall, this bike doesn't offer a very high value. Uh, in fact, it's one of the more expensive bikes at this level, but it's a very solid choice for a sporty fitness hybrid. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And until next time, please subscribe and thanks for watching.